All right, good morning, Miss Lauren and anyone else who get, might get this video. Um, what I felt, so you got my presentation about the pulleys, um, you know, using tension and our torque equation to find acceleration of those pulley systems. So I wanted to show you all today what I think is extremely valuable, which is the rolling without slipping, how we can find these accelerations down an incline um, if we're rolling without slipping. So we've got this like incline, we'll say, and what's going to happen, oop, What's going to happen there is we've got, we'll call it, let's say it's a hollow sphere. Okay, and it's rolling down this hill, right? And so what we want to do is we want to find the acceleration, but what's happening is there's, you know, there's a couple things going on here, right? So the first thing we want to do is understand, you know, the difference between linear and rotational, right? So my linear equation is F sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration, and my torque is sum of all torques equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Okay, so I'm going to use these two equations to help myself come up with a one equation for acceleration. So the first thing we have to understand is sum of forces here, obviously, is going to be our mg sine theta minus our force of static friction. And that will give me mass times acceleration. And then for my torques, the tricky thing is here, remember, the torque on this problem is actually the friction, right? The friction is the thing providing the torque. So we're going to say friction times r is equal to, and remember, our hollow sphere, angular. Okay, so now I have this set up. And so what I could do here, so there's a couple of different things that I could do, but what I'm going to do first is um, we'll start over on my linear or translational side, say mg sine theta. I'm just going to expand out my friction, so you, mu mg cosine theta equals ma. And so now I can go ahead and get rid of my mass, so now I have g sine theta minus mu uh, g cosine theta equals a. So then I'm going to kind of do the same thing over here and start to eliminate, get rid of these r's and whatnot. And so we know it's still going to be mu mg cosine theta times r equals two-thirds mr squared. And let's go ahead and just expand this so we can do this in one step. All right, so we've got two r's that we can eliminate one on the left side and one on my um, denominator here. So then I can rewrite this as mu mg cosine theta equals two thirds ma. All right, so now I have, I'm starting to get a little bit closer and here we could solve for a, or we could solve for mu. I like doing it for mu, I think it's easier. And so what I'm gonna do now is then isolate mu for this equation. So I wanna isolate my mu here. So what's gonna end up happening is obviously we'd still get rid of m's so I can say mu g cosine theta equals two-thirds a, or mu equals 2a over 3g cosine theta. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in this mu here for this mu up here and see if we can't eliminate some stuff, okay? So then I have g sine theta minus 2a g cosine theta over... 3g cosine theta. And so now we can see that my g cosine theta will be gone. And that's all equal to a. So now I have g sine theta minus 2 thirds a equals a. And so then, of course, I can say, well, g sine theta equals, uh, was this 5 thirds a? Or a is equal to three-fifths g sine theta. And so hopefully this helps. You can do this for any of them. Obviously, you'd have to change your moment of inertia to, you know, uh, our different versions, two-fifths, one-half m r squared, things like that, right? But this is how you would determine um, which one's going to accelerate the fastest, right? And you could use, I don't know if you have done energy yet, but then you could do energy to find out who would have the fastest velocity at the end. Um, and so the combination of the energy and this is going to be everything that you need in order to solve all of these problems, right? So remember, it always starts with setting up with these two main equations and then expanding those equations based on our knowledge. And then we're just trying to isolate and simplify so that we can get one equation that will give us the acceleration in terms of gravity. And so we can see here that we use the fact that my sum of my linear forces will equal ma and my sum of my torques would equal ia. And so then we were able to work through that and plug in and solve for our acceleration. 
So I hope that this is helpful in helping you to drive that. We'll practice this more next week, um, but I just wanted to get something to you this week so that um, you're able to keep on making that progress. So until next time, 